Hey everybody, this is Big Anklevich here. It's a special addendum to our Christmas present podcast that we did earlier. I talked to Rish Outfield and got his uh, reaction to the story. We tacked it on to the end of the uh, podcast that we'd already aired, so if you want to skip ahead and just hear the new parts, that would be at 13 minutes and 54 seconds in. So go ahead and skip there, or go ahead and listen through again, and uh, you'll find us on the end. Enjoy. <laughs> You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Hey everybody, Big Anklevich here. Uh, I know you just heard from us yesterday, but we've got a special uh, bonus podcast for you today. A special bonus story. Um, no Rish Outfield or uh, R080T today. Rish has uh, already left for the holidays to see his family in Hoboken, and uh, 080T has already uh, gone back to the uh, Cyberdyne factory to uh, visit his family. So it's just me today. Um, I have a very special podcast for you today. It's, it's kind of a Christmas gift podcast. My wife was cleaning out our room this week, and she came across an old story by Rish Outfield. So I took a look at this story, and it was a Christmas story, and it was written by Rish, who is always, I'm, I'm sure you've heard him, you know, we play the sad music, and he cries about how he writes stories, and, and nobody likes them, and uh, he sends them off, and, and they're always rejected. So I thought for Christmas, it would be nice to do a Rish Outfield story. Now, this story was titled, Untitled Santa tale 2004 um i figured i'd go ahead and give it a a, a title myself uh after all he's titled enough of my stories before in the past that can't hurt him to be titled by me so i gave it a title and i was going to record it and then i had another thought and i thought oh what better for a gift to rish outfield than to have the, have the story read by none other than one of his favorite podcasters of all time Norm Sherman. So I got a hold of Norm Sherman, who uh, we'd just done some stuff with for the Drabblecast, which we were real excited about. And now, w even more amazing, Norm Sherman has done some stuff for us. I'm so excited to put this out there and to give this to Rish as a special Christmas present. So, Rish, here's your story. It's not called Untitled Santa Tale anymore. It's now called... Naughty or Nice. By Rish Outfield. Ho, ho, ho. And ten o'clock finally arrived. Thank God. Chris Lingman had closed down the line at 9.30. Otherwise, there might not have been an end to the line of snot-nosed, smelly brats begging me for junk. I stood up, hearing my knees popping from a long day of sitting in the Santa chair. There were still a couple of shoppers wandering about, but my work was done. It was the Saturday before Christmas, and all through the store, I had gotten really sick of the holidays. I'd heard Brookhart's department store was in need of a Santa Claus from Riley Lingman, a drinking buddy whose brother Chris was the assistant manager. Blessed, or cursed, with a lot of fat and not a lot of hair, I looked the part to Chris and got the job. It didn't pay a hell of a lot, but it seemed like easy work at the time. Boy, was I wrong. I'd been doing it eight hours a day since the 17th, and in that time I'd been puked on, peed on, cried on, drooled on, sneezed on, beard pulled, slapped, licked, and kicked in the balls twice by kids who'd surely get everything they wanted anyway. And today I'd been here since 11 in the morning, with barely a break to stretch my aching back, asking, And what do you want for Christmas? So many times it didn't even sound like English anymore. Chris had approached me about doing it again next year, but I'd have to do some serious drinking between now and then to even consider it. Hey, Santa, a woman's voice said. I turned, expecting to see Maria the Elf, who was somehow almost as fat as I was. She helped the little bastard sit on my lap and gave them a candy cane. But it wasn't her. The woman standing in front of me was a young, blonde thing, five foot nothing and grinning. She had the body of a pole dancer, barely clad in a halfway unbuttoned western shirt and stonewashed jeans at least three sizes too tight. Her dark little eyes were too close together, making her look a bit like a woodchuck. She was the sexiest girl I'd ever laid eyes on. 
Hey, I said, a moment late. You, uh, got a kid you want me to meet? No, sir, she said, her high, quiet voice making me think of farm girls and what's-her-name on the Beverly Hillbillies. I seen you talking to the kids and wondered if you might want to get some drinks with me. My jaw suddenly felt too heavy to stay shut. I, uh... Unless you gotta get back to the North Pole, she said, pronouncing North North. Or you don't drink? Oh, I, <laughs> I drink, I said, sounding like an idiot but not giving a damn. It was hard enough to keep my eyes on her face, let alone think straight. Then let's go, she said, putting out her elbow for me to take. Give me a minute to change, I said, heading toward the break room. Don't change, Santa. I like your uniform. All right, I said. So she had some kind of Santa fetish. Didn't hurt me none. I, uh, I gotta clock out first, I said. I'll wait for you in the parking lot. My name's Tiffany, but I suppose you knew that. I didn't know how I could. If I had seen her before, I would have remembered. Sure enough, she was standing there by the front doors, looking hot in the freezing cold. She showed me to her pickup truck, and I climbed aboard. She started the engine and waited for the heater to kick in. She turned towards me. Santa? Um, yes? Do you really know who's been naughty and nice? She leaned in like it was a secret. I could smell beef jerky on her. And it struck me. She hadn't asked me where I was from. She hadn't asked what I did for a living. She hadn't even asked me my name. Did she really think that I was Santa Claus? That, um, only works on kids, I told her. Oh, she exclaimed, seeming very relieved at that news. Uh, why? Have you been naughty? Oh, very naughty, Santa, Tiffany said. I hope you'll still come down my chimney. Yikes. We hit a bar with fewer people, lights, and smoke than the one I usually went to. As we walked in, I regretted not taking her to Red's Club, where all the boys could have seen me with Tiffany on my arm. They'd never believe me otherwise. We sat down and I ordered a round. She pounded it down and let out a roar like a freight train. A man could fall in love. You hungry, Santa? Tiffany asked me. No, I, uh, I had a big steak earlier. I nudged her. A venison steak? She frowned. That's not funny. Oh, I was just, I'm sorry. So maybe she was a vegetarian. The drinks arrived and disappeared just as quickly. She bought me around and I returned the favor. This was shaping up to be the best night of my life. And just an hour earlier, I was sweating inside that department store, hating Christmas with all of my might. I was unsteady as we made our way out of the bar, but leaned on her a little more than was necessary. She didn't complain. If anything, she was more forward than I was. You want to hit my place? She asked as we walked through the snow to her truck, and for a very brief moment, I wondered if that was such a good idea. I mean, how crazy was she? But my eyes fell to the front of her blouse, and I turned it into a nod. Sounds good, I said, and we hopped into the pickup. She drove me to a neighborhood I'd never seen before, one way over on the old side of town, where every yard was huge and filled with trees, I don't know how long we drove, really, since I was sort of sleepy, but when we pulled up to a big house, I was impressed. It looked like the sort of place your grandparents had grown up in, with woodwork and gabled windows and trim. Your place? You know it is, silly, she said. You used to bring me presents here. This time, she sounded a bit doubtful, and I wondered if the game was wearing thin for her. Right... I hesitated a moment after getting out of the truck. My fake beard was itching. Something wasn't right. Tiffany came around and held out her hand. I took it. Her hands were rough and cold. 
Let's go in, she said. I followed. The door wasn't locked and there were lights on. The house was too big for one person. Your, uh, family live here with ya? Uh-huh, she said. She closed the door behind her. It was chilly in the house, and the walls were lined with shipping boxes and junk-filled apple crates. Pack rats, huh? Cold, I observed. This house has been here a long, long time, said Tiffany. I don't doubt it. Well, we could go out in the back porch and warm up. I thought I'd heard her wrong. On the back porch? She grinned again looking like a cute little animal. A ferret, maybe. I'll make some hot chocolate. I followed her into the kitchen. It was also cluttered with tons of junk. She was acting stranger now, and I didn't know where I was or how to get back. So, what are the elves like? Tiffany asked, heating up milk in an ancient-looking microwave. Oh, I, I don't know, I said, feeling less and less drunk all the time. She brought a cup over to me and placed it in my hand. Careful, it's hot, she said, and went through the kitchen to the back door. Are you sure you want to go outside? But she was already out there. I followed. There was darkness as far as the eye could see. We were out in the middle of nowhere. I've been wanting to ask you something, she said sexily. Okay. You're not the real Santa Claus, are you? Though the whole situation was nutty, that was cute. She seemed like such a child, I really couldn't help but smile. No, my name's Tommy. Well, that's a relief, she sighed and flipped on the backyard light. And I saw the graves. There were headstones in the backyard, some old and crumbling, some new and ornate, all going off into the distance. There were other mounds there, too, unmarked. That was it. I had to get the hell out of here. But what could I say? This was beyond weird. But I didn't have time to say anything. At that moment, two men came running out from behind the trees. They were huge, ugly men with familiar rodent-like eyes, wearing filthy butcher's aprons. One held a meat cleaver, the other a hacksaw. I turned to Tiffany. What's going on? But she was already swinging the hatchet toward me. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story, especially you, Rish. I hope you listened to it, and I hope you'd enjoyed it. I hope you liked Norm's reading. I actually did, at one point, record a female to read the female parts, and as usual, uh, as per the way things go here on the Dune Steve, I accidentally deleted that file and have no copy of it anywhere. So I went ahead and let Norm's reading stand alone before itself. It's amazing. He's great as is. So... We just let it go with that. So there you have it. Merry Christmas to everybody, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, very special extra edition of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Have a Merry Christmas. See you later, folks. Thank you for... Hey! We're back. It's a couple days later, and uh, Rish is here. And I just thought we'd talk to him a little bit for a little addendum to the Christmas present podcast. Well, thank you for doing this. How was your Xmas? It was good. I got uh, an iPod Nano, but Big Anglovich doesn't know those are for women. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a good time hanging out with the kids and the family and all that stuff. It was good, good stuff. How about you? What, what was your Christmas like? It was good. Small town kind of thing, family. As the listener at home knows, I got a very special present from uh, Big Anklovich, uh, which I suppose you're listening to right now. Yeah, they just finished listening to, I guess, because that's where we're throwing this bit in. Okay, so how did you pull this off? Did uh, you have to beg him or pay him, or, or, or did you 
Did you call him up or did you just email him or was I this a long him, time ago? Yeah. Or? No, it was just a little while ago. It was a very short period of time that I had to uh, take care of it. I, we, like I said, I happened upon the story. I think it was under the bed somewhere. and I didn't even remember you giving it to me. Yeah, I looked at it and I thought, <laughs> and I was going to record it myself. But then I thought, hey, we just did that stuff with Norm. Maybe Norm will do something for us. So I wrote him an email and... He's like, well, it'll be tight because i got to leave on Christmas vacation, but I'll see what I can do. And he got it to us. Yeah, it all came together. It was great. That's really, really cool. And you didn't have to offer him your firstborn child or anything like that? Well, I offered it to him, but he, he declined. He's a good guy. He'll take a lower in the birth order child. He's not, it doesn't have to be the firstborn. Nice. All right, well, we'll do the Sophie's Choice episode next week. Well, hey, I'm a little embarrassed to have my name on there and my work <laughs> out there for people to critique. But uh, heck, you know, working with the robot, I'm used to all sorts of great insults. Yeah, I'm sure people are uh, working them up right now. Ooh. Oh, will the hate letters pour in? <sighs> I may not last till next week. Oh, hey, you know, since it was a surprise story, we didn't really get to do an author's note. Why don't you do an author's note for this story for everybody? Really? Like a, like a real episode? Yeah. I mean, uh, it wasn't really a real episode. You didn't get a page number, but oh. you can do an author's note. So hey, you think you'll, you could call an uh, announcer man and, and get him to come in here and record an author's note uh, <laughs> and all that stuff? I don't know. He's, he's pretty, you know. Old? Yeah. But he's pretty guarded. <laughs> he's pretty guarded Trump. about his uh, vacation time. So oh, okay. I, I'll just do it for you. Ready? Author's note. <laughs> that sounded pretty good. I wrote this story a few years ago based on an internet site that would put up a picture. The picture would be up for, let's say, two months, and it would invite people until they took it down to write a story based on or, on or inspired by that picture. And the picture for this story was there was a field and there were these obviously crude, handmade, like little headstones. And somebody had decorated this makeshift country cemetery with Christmas lights. And it seems like there might have been a Santa hat on one of them. Maybe there wasn't. But in my mind, how I interpreted that picture, I thought of a Santa kind of thing. And it seems like I had a couple of different ideas inspired by that picture. But uh, that was the only one that I, I wrote, and that was what I sent in. And I guess I sent it to you for Merry Christmas. I, I don't know. I have no memory of sending it to you either. I used to send you lots of stories, though. And I'd say, hey, did you ever read? And you'd say, no, I don't, I don't think you sent that. <laughs> I don't think you did send me lots of stories. I don't know what you're talking about. I found that thing printed out, and I'm pretty sure it was printed out with a printer other than my own. Wait, how did you get it to Norm if it was printed out? I had to type it. <laughs> Oh my, really? Yeah. Wow, luckily, dedication, luckily, folks. Luckily it was short. All the really lame parts were yours then. So that that internet site, that was a contest that you did a... a... Yeah, it was a, it was a kind of cool little writing contest thing, and they do it all the time. And uh, I probably wrote six or seven, eight wow. stories for that contest. That's cool. Was... So you won the contest, right? Uh, for for this, this right, particular for Christmas, Christmas one? one? No, I didn't. No? We got... What, second place? No, I don't uh, believe so. Uh, honorable mention? You know, I, I don't remember if they even did honorable mentions. So you didn't win that time, but how many times did you? I mean, you always said you put in like eight or nine stories. How many did you win? Um, so so you, you had a good Christmas then? <laughs> it was... Uh, no, I, I actually never won the uh. contest. <laughs> Why did we publish your story? If you can't even win that contest, what the heck? Ugh. Keep those cards and letters coming. Folks. <laughs> That's right. All right. So uh, happy new year now, I guess, is uh, the correct phrase for the end of this story since it's a few days later. And thank you for doing that. It was hey. really, really cool. And You're thank welcome, you, Norm. Man. Yeah, thanks a lot, Norm. And what really, it was Norm that made it worthwhile. As opposed to the author of the story. Oh, well, it was all right, but... <laughs> Good night. See ya. Listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. 
The Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This means that you may share these files with anyone, but you may not charge for them or alter them. Oh, oh.